Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Welcome to Tuesday. Life is good, better than Monday, I hope, because days get better every single time you live through one. Hopefully. That's the goal, anyways. Let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is our website, UFD Deals. Let's say you're trying to buy a Ryzen 3000, or wait, the better value, cheaper Ryzen 2000 since AMD has dropped the prices. Well, if you go to UFD Deals, you'll find all of the CPU deals there. You'll find deals on motherboards, you'll find deals on monitors. Anything that you might be trying to build a new PC with, check it out at UFD Deals. Go to UFD.tech, link for that's in the video description. Check it out, save money. We get an affiliate kickback, you guys save money. Everybody is happy. Good. I'm happy now that you're listening to me. Let's move on into the title of today's video, which is about Ryzen 3000 reviews being wrong by everybody everywhere because I, in a lot of the reviews that were actually went out on the internet, you heard some people talking about how they were having issues with their Ryzen 3000 boost clocks and how they were struggling to make sure that the BIOS on their X570 motherboard, regardless of vendor, whether it was MSI, ASRock, Gigabyte, ASUS, all of them had a little weird issue with Ryzen 3000 when it came to the actual performance of the chips, or rather the actual stated clock of the chips. However, now that has been fixed. AMD has rolled out what is presumably a fixed BIOS out to the public for most uh, motherboard vendors to update their motherboards to make sure that now Ryzen 3000 chips can actually hit their advertised speed. And a lot of people were thinking, well, this is the reason why the 9900K beat the 3900X. This is the reason why the 3600 didn't match the 9900K in games. It was supposed to, but it didn't. Rumors hurt me. And this is the reason why, because they couldn't achieve the boost clocks. However, that is probably not true, especially after Gamers Nexus has actually done another deep dive analysis into the AGESA difference between what they tested initially with on their 3600 and 3900X reviews and then what it is now. And they found that there was minimal, if not no difference between the two motherboard uh, BIOSes uh, they found that there was little to, if not no difference between the different BIOS uh, configurations for the Ryzen 3000 chips. And even if the new chips were hitting the actual boost clocks that they're supposed to, it didn't actually bring any better performance whatsoever. However, that doesn't mean that some other reviewers methodology or testing might have been conflicted based on this. Not conflicted, but just straight up not as good as it could have been. And you could find that Ryzen 3000 might perform better with certain reviewers than with Gamers Nexus. Anon Tech has also mentioned that they're gonna be retesting all of their Ryzen 3000 coverage because of this motherboard discrepancy, but it does appear that Ryzen 3000 was wrong in the reviews in that the chips weren't as good as they could have been, and AMD has fixed that now, but they're not so much better that it actually matters all that much. So you take that for what it's worth. All Ryzen 3000 reviews are wrong, but not necessarily in a bad way. How do you feel about that? Let me know. But you know what you should feel bad about? Especially if you're a Destiny 2 player who went down to the nearest micro center, picked up a 3600 and a 5700, slapped it in your system, and then found out Destiny 2 is incompatible with Ryzen 3000 somehow. There are tons of information on subreddits for Destiny and AMD and the game forums for Destiny 2 reporting, I can't play this damn game because the chips somehow are incompatible. There's crashes happening anytime you try to boot up Destiny 2. Hopefully Bungie is going to be working on this, but yeah, that's what you get for being an early adopter, punks. Growing pains, teething pains, deal with it on one game that nobody really cares about. This is why you should just be playing on Google Stadia. I know my own destiny, uncle. And then another issue that's actually been popping up when it comes to Ryzen 3000 and Navi is at least reported by Hardware Canucks that if you combine an X570 motherboard with a RX 5700 or Navi GPU and you use a PCI Express riser, you're screwed. It only runs a 2D mode because apparently there's like some signaling issues that aren't going on with Gen 4. With a PCI Express 3.0 riser, you would need a 4.0 riser, which doesn't exist yet. And then apparently there are some possibilities that you can work around by setting the PCI Express 4.0 lane to be 3.0, but that doesn't work in every single motherboard. So like there's some workarounds, but not necessarily all of them, but just be wary that your PCI Express 3.0 stuff might not work all the time with 4.0. 
It's just, it's just growing pains, friends. Everything's new, everything's fresh. But even more issues with that is that there are some BIOS ROM size limitations that are causing AMD to drop feature sets when it comes to older motherboards and the new Ryzen 3000 chips. So in sacrificing for backwards compatibility to put a 3600 into your motherboard, you might have to give up RAID support as well as the ability to run 28 nanometer Bristol Ridge APUs, which are the original APUs that came out were, were technically Athlon, I believe. So programs and features are getting reshuffled around in order to maintain CPU compatibility with older motherboards that only have smaller amounts of ROM for their BIOS chips. It's not gonna affect every motherboard, but there are gonna be some compromises to the fact that AMD has promised that these chips are supported. So it actually might be worthwhile to not update your BIOS if you're not planning on getting a Zen 2 chip because you might lose out on features that you might otherwise need. And then let's talk about one last broken thing around this Ryzen launch, which is Newegg screwed up the AMD Xbox Game Pass promotion saying that it starts at 2.30 p.m. One, time zone wasn't mentioned, but then two, they started the promotion at 2.30 p.m. even though Ryzen chips went on sale at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So from 9 a.m. until 2.30, anybody who bought a Ryzen 3000 chip did not qualify for the AMD Xbox Game Pass promotion. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially since AMD's official terms and conditions says that this started on July 1st. So Newegg did an oopsie. And also, one last thing, Navi doesn't support Crossfire. So suck on that. Suck it, nerds! But good things, custom, Ryzen, or custom Navi cards have been confirmed by AMD to be coming in mid-August. It's about a month and a half and away, especially given the reviews that the new, the Founders Edition reference Navi cards suck really loudly blow really loudly. They're hot and loud, just like you would expect an AMD card to be, but also there's been tweets by Hardware Unboxed and Timmy Joe showing that if they just put a custom cooler on it, everything's lecker brew. So, you know, custom cards can't come fast enough, but MSI apparently has been uh, confirmed to be releasing seven different iterations of the 5700 series, including a Gaming X, an Evoke, mech and air boost. So we'll have to see what those look like coming soon. And then as mentioned Google Stadia in a joke earlier, this is why you should just be playing on Google Stadia. So I'm segueing to that now. Google has revealed new information regarding Stadia, including the fact that if a developer pulls out from Stadia, you still can actually play the game if you bought it, which is strange and I don't believe them. I'm just straight up gonna call crap. The first time this happens with the major developer who pulls out of Google because they have some ideological issue and they revoke the right for Stadia players to play the game, I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen at least once. I'm like, I'm, I don't believe you, Google. I don't think you can hold to that promise. And then also they talked about how there is gonna be multiplayer built in for co-ops and then there's also like all mobile phone support. So new information about Stadia, but the most important is that you retain the game even if the developer pulls out. And then in case you like Spotify, they're apparently rolling out a Spotify Lite app, testing it in 36 different markets for right now, which you can check at the link in the video description. So you want a light version of music, go ahead and check that out. Although there's like some controversy between Spotify being buttholes and Apple being buttholes. And I'm not getting into that now because I'm gonna get into the FCC chairman, Ajit Pai, everybody's favorite Reese's cup mug drinker, have you seen that thing? It's huge. Anyways, he is apparently wanting to ban caller ID spoofing for text messages, which is great because apparently there's a loophole in the regulations at this point that allows people to spoof numbers when it comes to SMSs. And so they can do it legally, which is why they're getting away with it. I don't see how this is necessarily gonna stop everybody if it is illegal, but it seems like a good step in the right direction. They're also trying to fight robocalls. So he's not doing everything wrong. And then speaking of things getting wrong, it appears that one of the sources that's been reporting on a lot of things lately, the uh, uh, organization known as Nikkei, has suggested several things that have been wrong, at least when you talk to the official sources about it. And this time it's Microsoft moving manufacturing out of China. Nikkei reported that Microsoft as well as Dell, HP, and Amazon and other tech companies would be removing production out of China because of the ongoing trade war with the US government and the Chinese government. However, Microsoft has straight out refused that claim. So take that for what it's worth. It could just be to assuage shareholders. It could not be true. It's, there's a whole like, this is just politics PR style. 
And then Samsung has confirmed that they are, have some certification going on for their five nanometer EUV lithography, getting tools by Cadence and Synopsys certified for producing five nanometer chips, which is pretty cool. And then the best feature that you didn't hear about when it came to the new GPU launches was frame view by Nvidia. This is supposed to be a replacement for something like Fraps that allows you to display frame rate and frame times in like a heads up display on your game. So frame view being rolled out with the new super cards, it's kind of cool, kind of cool. I'm not sure if there's like, okay, it does have benchmarks. You can set benchmarks, you can do this. It's supposed to replace Fraps. It should work with all APIs. Fraps, of course, doesn't work with Vulkan or DX12 because it hasn't been updated in six years. But then there are replacements for it like Presentmon, uh, MSI Afterburner has Reva Tuner built in, which allows you to do uh, similar things on whatever API that you want. So, but NVIDIA providing an alternative in case you wanna keep your frame rate counter on screen all the time. And then a piece of cool AR news and probably the coolest AR news that I've seen is a company called Form releasing augmented reality swim goggles that are built, you're able to swim with them, but then they also display things like lap times and how far you've swum, swam, swimming, you swimmin'-y. How far you got your legs flapping in the water, okay? The distance that you have traversed in the, in the Aquarius environment or just giving you a heads up display of everything that's going on and being waterproof at the same time. This is actually kind of cool for swimmers. I really like this implementation and it seems more practical than, you know, hollow <laughs> And then in something that I care about and I'm gonna get flame roasted in the comments for because everybody likes to pick on everybody's favorite things, my favorite car is the Corvette. Shut up, I don't care what yours is, I don't care why I'm wrong, it's my favorite car. You can go fly a kite. I don't care if you're a Ford fanboy or you like the GTR or you like something else. Corvette is in my heart forever, apparently the new C8 is ready to be displayed to the world and they're gonna be unveiling it to press and the public via a live stream on the 18th of July. So stay tuned for that. I mean, the, the wrapped version that doesn't have all of the details to it looks phenomenal. I love the Corvette. It's too bad that I slightly care about the environment, sort of, and I'm gonna buy a Tesla just cause I'm a tech fanboy. So my Corvette dreams are ripped bygone era, unless they make it an electronic autonomous car. I'll buy that. And then in, in the bit of news that's just like, of course, yes, these are two things that need to be merged together, like jelly and hot dogs, like Ryzen and Nvidia, like Reese and a potato vacuum. These are just, yes, 7-Eleven and financial apps. It goes together, okay? Because apparently there was a seven pay app in Japan that like, like you paid with stuff at 7-Eleven and somehow it was tied. I don't know, Ford's biggest like freaking income generator is their credit lines, not the fact that they actually sell cars. So everybody gets into the finance game at some point, I suppose. Anyways, apparently this was super easily hacked and ended up costing the company over $500,000 because of lost revenue on this. Good job, 7-Eleven. It just goes together like butter and sour cream on a piece of granola. Anyways, that's the end of hot news. Don't forget to check out UFD deals if you wanna save money, ufd.tech. Buy your tech stuff there, do that. Click on the links, okay? We don't sell anything directly, it's just affiliate links to other websites that are selling things at a discount, so you save money. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode of Hot News. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the Hot News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too, bye. This is why you should just be playing on Google Stadia.